the effervescent Dan Plesak of uh, MLB Network joining us right here again here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Dan? Rich, I'm good. I love it. Chicago mold. You, you know what I laugh? Only, this could only be in the world of pro sports, right? Yes. Like, your teams stay in the best hotels in the world. It's not like guys are staying at, like, the, some ro- motor inn somewhere <laughs> on the south side of Chicago, right? I mean, they're yeah. probably staying at the Westin, right, on Michigan Avenue. So, I don't know. You, you know, Rich, it's, it's hard to put a finger on what's going, what the hell's going on with the Nationals. You would assume, I was listening to the lead-in, they get the extra day. You would assume Strasburg's going today. Yeah. I mean, come on, what, what the hell's going on there? I mean, and, and this is, I think, part in, of, of lies in what's wrong, why they can't win a playoff series. Three years ago, he couldn't pitch. Uh, I, I, you know what? Yeah, it, no, no, it, an it, innings it, count, right? That was the innings it, count it, here. It put up or shut up time, right? I mean, listen, we, we've heard this. It, it's this time of the year right now. Their backs are up against the wall. They're down two games to one. It's his normal day's rest. Yesterday, they said he might be available out of the bullpen, but he threw a bullpen, and then they weren't sure if he threw a bullpen or not. Come on. What, what, I mean, it, enough already. It either, either take the ball and listen, we don't need any built-in excuses. If he pitches poorly today, it was because he had the sniffles or he had a, a mold issue. Let's, let's go. Come on. You know what I mean? It's time to man up and go. And, and I was hoping this was going to be the postseason 2017 that we could put all that to bed with Steven Strasburg because I'm a huge fan of his, Rich. Yeah, listen. From a talent standpoint and what he able to do, the last 8-10 starts of the regular season, he was as good as any pitcher in baseball. And I thought in game one, he pitched he pitched well. He should have won that game. Ten strikeouts, seven innings, two unearned runs. He pitched great. And I thought this would be the postseason, Rich, that we could stop the excuses. Is he made out of paper? Does he, You know what I mean? And listen, I, I, take the ball today, and I really want him to go out there and throw the ball well today if he does pitch. We still don't know yet to, what's going to happen. Is it going to huh. be Roark or Strasburg? It sounds like it's Strasburg from everything that I'm reading on Twitter right now. Um, so is so is there a pitch count? Have you ever heard of a pitcher having a pitch no, count and, you know, and, no, no, and a spores is, count? Is there a no, spores really? count? We're, check, we're, we're counting spores as well, Dan? Yeah, I don't know. I, I know. You know what? You know what? And that that's – you know what, Rich? And that's why, listen, I, we can't root for any particular teams. I have some teams that I root for. I have some players that I root for. But that's why I'm rooting for CC Sabathia tonight for the Yankees. You know what it is? Listen, he's, listen, he is not the guy that he was seven, eight years ago. He single-handedly carried the Milwaukee Brewers to the postseason, right? He did. He won a Cy Young. But you know what he does? He takes the ball every five days. No complaining, no crying. If there's anybody that has a built-in excuse, he's had a bad knee, a bum back, you know he's had some elbow and shoulder issues, but you know what? I can tell you this. I don't know if the Yankees are going to win tonight, but I don't think there's a pitcher I'd rather have going into this game that I could trust to get through five or six innings like CC Sabathia. You're kidding. And I know I'm not supposed to root for teams or guys, but I'm going to make it known I root for CC Sabathia. He's my kind of guy. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm part of that Yankee fandom, Dan. That's sitting here thinking when Joe Girardi said after they won game four, my guys picked me up. And I'm sitting there thinking, Girardi will not have been picked up by his guys until they move on in this series Amen. because they should I, already be there. You and, you and I must think the same way because we you do. know what? We, yes, because we were just in a meeting, the pre-show meeting for the 3 o'clock. I'm going to be on the 3 to 4.30 Eastern pregame to this Cub game. On MLB and Network. Our, yeah, and all of our research guys are all Yankee fans, right? And they said the same thing that you said and I thought. He will be forgiven if they win this game five and move on. Yeah. If they lose this game five, a lot of Yankee fans right now in this building here at MLB Network, they're already, we should have won this series already. It should be over already, and I agree with you. I, I think he'll get a pick-me-up if they win tonight. All will be forgiven, and then they'll move on. Well, I agree with you. Well, but, you know, uh, researchers and then guys like me sitting here and, and having been around uh, clubhouses, though, um, it's not – you've been in dugouts, uh, and things move fast. Things are crazy. They do. I understand. What Have you determined for real what in the hell happened in that dugout that Friday night? No. Y- you know, this is the only thing I can I can tell you that I know is if, if we've seen managers and what they do, they're always looking for their bench coach or that guy that's, you know, in contact upstairs with the guys that are on camera. And this is the problem, Rich, is there are a lot of different reviews and angles that are used – 
But the last one that was used in that game was the most clear one that showed that it hit off the knob of the bat. The problem is that was about 50 seconds in, and you have about 30 seconds to challenge. So I think what happened was Joe was kind of sitting there looking for help from somebody in the clubhouse or in their replay center that's saying, yeah, go ahead and challenge it. There wasn't an angle that was shown enough in time for them to see that it hit the bottom of the bat. And I think then that's he ended up getting – he got left by the side of the curb because of that. Damn. And instead of – then he came up with the – he didn't want to disrupt yeah. the flow of the wow, game, which, man. you know, he makes eight pitch trips out to get pitchers. And Gary Sanchez, every other pitch is running out. So I didn't buy any of that either. He, he yeah. simply got caught with his pants down. And he admitted to it – I'll give him this. The next day. He, he admitted to it the next day. He, he did. He should have challenged it. Because, uh, yeah. again, Dan, and, just, and then we'll put a button on it and move on to a couple other things uh, with Dan Plesak, the MLB Network. That you know, as I, I said it the other day too, and I'm, I'll repeat it to you. No better way to keep your pitcher in rhythm than to by putting his ass on the bench out of the inning. There's no. Yes. That's it. You want to keep your pitcher in rhythm, get him out of the inning. That's Thank it. you. End of Thank story. Uh, of the teams that are sitting at home right now, uh, rooting for 20 inning games tonight, and in the case of the Dodgers, a fifth game. Uh, Dodgers and Astros. Let's just assume maybe they advance. Which one's the better team, Dan? What do you like? You know, I was down on the Dodgers because of what I saw the last, like, three and a half to four weeks. But with that said, Rich, mm-hmm. they they swept a pretty good Diamondbacks team. And not a pretty good, a real good. They made a good team look bad. And the Diamondbacks were playing some pretty good baseball. With that said, I was really disappointed in both starts by Zach Greinke. I expected more out of Greinke. And I thought what we saw out of the Dodgers in that series, what we saw when they were on that historic run, a lot of depth, some quality at-bats, Yasiel Puig starting to play like a really good player. Bellinger starting to wake up. Seager starting to wake up. They're a, re- they're a, they're a really good team. I, I don't think they're a great team. They're a good team. I'm not completely sold on their starting pitching. Uh, their bullpen looks really good right now. With that said, I think the Astros right now might be the best team in the AL. And, I, and going in, I thought it was the Cleveland Indians. But after watching this Houston Astros team, that's not a team I want to mess with. That lineup is really deep. Springer swinging the bat well. Correa swinging the bat really well. Reddick came up with some big hits. Verlander has been a game changer. I'm a little concerned about the back end of their bullpen. Um, I, I, I listen. I feel like I told you two weeks ago when we talked. I think if the Yankees can get out of this game five, the Yankees could very easily find themselves in the World Series. The Yankees are a really good team. They are. They are a really good team. And and. They may have found something with this Canely guy coming out of the bullpen. But Tantus, I think you could forget about him in Game 5. After what we saw in Game 4, Rich, forget about Batantis. But Canely stepped up. Batantis is like Paulie in The Godfather. You won't, oh, see, him. You won't see him no more. Oh, no. Uh, he's not. No, oh, I think Paulie? The next time, yeah. You won't yeah. see him no more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, but, but Canely has stepped up. I like, yes. I, for some reason, I know this is unconventional thinking, but for some reason, I think somehow, some way, the Yankees pull out this Game 5. Tonight. I do. And if they they do. I think they're going to get to the World Series. I really, I like the Yankees in a in a seven game series against the Houston Astros. I think the Yankees can beat them in seven. All right, games. you're, fre- really you're freaking me out, Dad. So let me just move on one last thing here. Do you agree or disagree with the dismissal of John Farrell in Boston today? Uh, I, I kind of agree with it. I, I think there was some there was some concern that was going through that clubhouse. Um, you, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And, and I think for the most part, every manager, there's an expiration date with certain organizations. And it's hard to say that when you've won back-to-back titles. But I, I, I think it was time for him to move on. And listen, he wasn't a Dave Dombrowski guy. He, he inherited him when he took over baseball operations. So, and the way that thing goes in front offices now, the guys that are running it, they want their own people running the ship underneath. So I think this was just a matter of time it was going to happen. So who's that guy? Is he going to call Jim Leland, see if he's got one, one oh, more sure run left he has, but Jim, I played golf with Jim Leland like four weeks ago yeah. up here in New York, yeah. and he says he's done managing. He doesn't want to do it again, and I believe him this time. Okay. I think he enjoys being retired. There's no way you'll see Jim Leland in the dugout. There's a good question. I don't know who that'd be. There's speculation he may bring in Brad Osmond, who he had in Detroit. Now, I don't know. Brad Osmond's name is popping up a lot now. Sandy Alderson, the Dartmouth guy. The Mets job is open. Austin's being the Dartmouth grad, the Phillies job, their GM is a Dartmouth guy. So Brad Austin's the kind of linked to like three or four different places right now. Well, I mean, you, I mean, in Boston, Dartmouth is like tenth on the list there, man. I mean, you got Harvard, you got yeah, MIT. Right? I mean, you got, <laughs> come on, yeah. on and on. I, you know, I thought I thought Jason Veritek's name is an intriguing name. You kind of always hear his name being thrown around. So maybe that could be a guy.
uh, you know, it, I know whoever it is better be a thick skinned guy because that's a tough job to take. It is. Dan, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you on MLB Network. What do you said? Three Eastern time, correct? Yeah, three Eastern, three a- to four o'clock today. A- MLB tonight airs before and after every single pro- postseason game. Visit MLBnetwork.com for your local channel listings. Take care, Dan. You got it. Thanks, Rich. That's Dan Plesak. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. Isn't it amazing you can download an app with your thumbprint? You should download our app with your thumbprint. 